gender what does she do is she a mother yeah i'm a mother of two i engage myself in business i've at some point engaged myself in corporate world but i dropped it uh, right now i'm self-employed struggling to make ends meet mm -hmm. i'm a widow mm -hmm. uh, for the first time i'm coming out to the limelight to share that I'm a widow. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I say I deal with the widows mm -hmm. and young girls, mm -hmm. you cannot do something that you don't have first-hand experience over it. Exactly. But I'm ready to say what I know mm -hmm. because I have first-hand experience. Yeah, because yeah. when I was introducing the show, I mentioned that there are some cultures which still hold on to retrogressive uh, cultures like wife inheritance the husband passes on and then the wife must be inherited and if she's not in for it she has to be disinherited so have you as a widow have you passed through such experiences so far on in terms of inheritance mm -hmm. not really but there is this um harsh treatment mm -hmm. Once you're a widow, you will never be treated right. Even with the nearest uh, relatives, mm -hmm. the society, they'll never treat you right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how has been your life as a widow? What challenges, what struggles have you gone through as a widow? To be specific, mm -hmm. um, when my husband left, mm -hmm. he left some properties, he left some business, mm -hmm. He left me with uh, children, mm -hmm. one from my own, mm -hmm. and then a foster children mm -hmm. that I had to take care of. My own, to some extent, you wish to do it your way or the way you had done it with your husband, mm -hmm. but there are these people in the society, maybe the in-laws, they want to come in like they own it. They want to direct you how to do it. They don't want you to have your life and it just become hectic, yeah. So when you say that they, they don't want to get involved with you, does it mean that they left you on your own to take care of the children and whatever you had? It's a tug of war, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, the society is large. There are brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, mm -hmm and uh, mother-in-law mm -hmm. some will be for your decision mm -hmm. but a good number will not be for it mm -hmm. and uh, at the start they will give big big promises that you are of our own we mm -hmm. will take care of it mm -hmm. but with time as time goes by mm -hmm. you find everybody withdrawing and now you're left alone mm -hmm. you have to do it mm -hmm. and now you're wondering now i'm alone mm -hmm. Which direction do I take? Mm -hmm. Should I go their way? Should I do it my way? Mm -hmm. And then you find there is this tug of war. They keep telling you, not this way, this way. But as a, as a woman, as a strong woman, I believe, mm -hmm. we have our strengths. Mm -hmm. And uh, after accepting that this is a situation, we are able to, we are able to get on. Yeah. So we say like when your husband passed, yes. did, you, did you go through the struggles that other widows go through? You find that uh, family in a bigger vita to an extent that you cannot even access the little wealth that your husband left behind. Yeah. And so you get struggles taking kids to school and all that. To a big extent, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. For example, mm -hmm. my husband left her business at, uh, when he was leaving, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, it's sad he's leaving and he has left. Mm -hmm. But I would console myself and say, at least there is something, there is somewhere that I, I would start from. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, there's a, a school business mm -hmm. that is started and uh, at some point mm -hmm. he trained me and I became the director of the school mm -hmm. like it's like he knew like uh, 
I will go at some point and if I don't make you strong, mm -hmm. you will not carry on this. But it has been a struggle to an extent that that school today, I'm telling you, it's not performing well because I literally withdrew. Mm -hmm. And they say, let it take its course. Because if I demand or if I do my direction, it didn't work. There is these other relatives who would push, like, it should not go that way. Mm -hmm. And they keep on asking you, like, where do you take the cash? We don't see any progress. Mm -hmm. You're failing everything. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I decided, like, let me just withdraw mm -hmm. and uh, somebody else to take over. And so how, how, okay, somebody else took over your husband's business, or rather your business as a family. So who took care of the kids? How did you take the kids to school? How did you manage everything around the home? I resolved it to a different direction. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my own business, mm -hmm. um, running an Mpesa. Uh, sometimes I actually went back and did some course in insurance mm -hmm. and I'm now selling insurance policies. So taking care of the kids, mm -hmm. it's a bit hectic, mm -hmm. but I'm heading there. Okay, yes. so you mentioned something about talking to girls and just making them come out as a better, better people. Yeah. Tell us something about that. Girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Young girls. Young girls. Yes. Yeah, as uh, I was growing up, mm -hmm. I grew up in a society that it wasn't so, so warm for the girl child mm -hmm. and I know what we underwent mm -hmm. and uh, up to this point mm -hmm. where I'm now a mother, an adult, mm -hmm. I've known the challenges that they undergo that to uh, some extent I say if I, if I was told or if I was mentored mm -hmm. at that point when I was a girl, mm -hmm. I could be a different person today. So I do meet girls. I've stayed in the borders of Kenya, Tanzania borders. Mm -hmm. That's where I got a first hand experience. There are so many girls mm -hmm. who lack mentorship, direction. So uh, I don't have a platform like an office where they come, but I can mm -hmm. pick. Mm -hmm. And uh, being that I've dealt with the school, mm -hmm. I've done the guidance and counseling in school, I can pick mm -hmm. and just talk to you. And because, tell you. because you find that right now, yeah. Teenage pregnancy is something that is not just going away. Yeah. You find that girls are indulging into it so much, so many girls. Not, you find that some of them are being lured into it because of poverty. Girls are having sex because of poverty, exchange for things mm. like pads. Mm. Pads, yeah. So in our society, some issues affecting girls like teenage pregnancy and and all that when you're talking to them what do you tell them yeah i'll start by just making that friendship mm -hmm. you must make that a conducive environment to them mm -hmm. show them that you understand mm -hmm. and you're just a girl like them mm -hmm. and uh, i tend to educate them and tell them it is normal. First, you know, sometimes they don't even understand the changes that they, they undergo. Mm -hmm. Just start by telling them this is normal. You have to undergo this. Mm -hmm. And when you feel this, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. But there is this challenge of rejection and poverty and lack of mentorship. Mm -hmm. When they go back home, they don't meet somebody to guide them. Mm -hmm. But if I get that opportunity, like I sit you down, I just dig into you, mm -hmm. I ask you your background, mm -hmm. What's the, I get the main challenge, what, where, where is this rain starting to be this girl? Is and so it when, when lack when, of money, uh -huh. lack of parent, lack of guide, uh, guidance? Uh, when you um, speak of lack of guidance, yeah. uh, do you think that parents have failed in a way in that when COVID hit, that is when uh, teenage pregnancies hit it's, up so yeah, it high. Really rise, it rises. Yes. Yeah. It rose so high that 
the question on people's mind was that has have parents failed in a way have they failed in their responsibilities of guiding and just taking care of their kids in a good way yeah to, uh, to some extent yeah because when covid came in it mm -hmm. was a transition mm -hmm. uh, an abrupt one mm -hmm. uh, parents used to keep their their pupils in school yeah, so when yeah. you speak of parents <laughs> keeping their pupils yeah. in school they they actually divided their responsibility mm -hmm. to the teachers and it used to be comfortable for them to do the activities mm -hmm. leaving the pupils to be attended to so when this covid uh, hit us mm -hmm. parents they didn't know what how to balance going to work mm -hmm. fetching for their children mm -hmm. and guiding them so they were left alone they were actually left alone mm -hmm. and the girls they were roaming all over mm -hmm. yeah and so do you think that is why i'm asking do yeah. you think parents have failed they in have a way failed. because they are leaving the responsibility they of have guiding and counseling failed mm -hmm. yeah they've actually failed so many parents especially mothers mm -hmm. and mothers i'm just saying it loud mothers are the first principles that have been accorded that strength of guiding these children mm -hmm. but they failed they don't have that one-to-one -one talk with their girls mm -hmm. they they tend to think that they know it mm -hmm. they don't know so i would say parents have, have failed especially mothers yeah and so moving on there was a time when the government was proposing of uh, teaching sex reproductive health in our schools what's your take on that it's been there though not intense mm -hmm. but i would emphasize that it will be a, mm -hmm. a, a subject on its own mm -hmm. and they tackle it fully mm -hmm. not that just you're being introduced and told these are the reproductive system mm -hmm. by the system and to which and the process and to which mm -hmm. uh, emotionally physically or spiritually it's not being touched mm -hmm. the teachers just brush on the topics like this is your reproductive area don't you think parts. don't you think that it will be too much information like kuchanua watoto no it mm -hmm. should be done in stages mm -hmm. yeah at class 1 there is that uh, little that she should know at at grade 1 mm -hmm. then you advance like that up to maybe the college mm -hmm. or that age that now you prefer this is now an adult mm -hmm. and with this knowledge she's good to go yeah it, not that you instill the whole thing into her head at that tender age mm -hmm. there are specific stages make sure you do it right you know for example you can't uh, start telling a girl at uh, grade one mm -hmm. that if you want to get pregnant this is how you do it mm -hmm it will be so hard but you can start with these uh, simple words like this is your private part mm -hmm. and don't call it with other name mm -hmm. give it a real name like this is a vagina mm -hmm. this is your breast mm -hmm. and don't let anybody touch your private part so the kid will always know that this is my private part it mm -hmm. is called this and this not for example like we tell our kids it's called dudu yeah they, and then they, they go they, to they, another grade mm -hmm. introduce another they, but, topic but there is someone who was trying to argue that uh, okay in some families their mother tongue speaking so there is someone who was arguing that uh, like for example a vagina you tell a baby that this is your vagina this, sure. this girl or li this little girl doesn't understand english can only speak her mother tongue so someone was arguing that some of these words they are so sound, big they and sound, they, sound they sound ambiguous <laughs> in our language obnoxious <laughs> mm. in a way really so, yes really? you find that a mother can't just tell the daughter or the son that this is how it's that's called that's where we go wrong mm -hmm. tell her how it's called mm -hmm. and how to use that word mm -hmm. it's like when you when you're using an abusive word mm -hmm. you know it's an abusive word mm -hmm. when you're using a polite word you know this is a polite word so you have to tell the kid that 
it is this that you don't use it when do you say when do you say sorry mm -hmm. when do you say thank you just the same way mm -hmm. you tell her in your language mm -hmm. yes so is it is it is it hard it can be hard <laughs> in a way for a young girl. <laughs> it can be hard in a way because one thing uh you you even find that parents who are educated find it hard they elite they find it hard to even talk to their daughters and their sons about sex do you know sex. why it's hard uh -huh. that's how we were brought up yes i know we we are we are transferring the pattern mm -hmm. but we can change we can change we don't need to live with like my parents this is just uh, a no a no no thing mm -hmm. no we can't live because with when that. when we are quiet you assume that these young girls yes. and boys don't know yeah, anything know, to do with and, and that's and that's uh, that's uh, where the problem starts mm -hmm. where do we go and learn these things yes where do we go and they learn are, they these are things? They are doing it. You, okay, you're not parents are not talking to them, but they are doing it on the internet. They are learning it from the internet. And before you know it, mm -hmm. you find that the young girl is pregnant. So, so. You, it comes with the shame of my, my, my teenage girl is pregnant. So what, he, what else do I do? So where I, do you start from? She's now pregnant. Where do you start from? Mm -hmm. Do you want now to start telling her, uh, you know, if you... If you don't do this, if you could have not done this, mm -hmm. what of if you told her before she went there? But in most cases, you find that uh, teenage pregnancies, in a way, becomes a cycle. You find that the mother to this young girl got pregnant when she was a teen mom. So how are you trying to break this cycle in the society when you're talking to these girls and moms too? I don't give them vague picture. Mm -hmm. I tend to give them the real thing. Mm -hmm. Real thing. Uh, sometimes they don't know. But when I engage them, mm -hmm. I tell them this is the real life. This is the real thing. Mm -hmm. It is called this. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the way to go. Yeah. This is the way to go. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. You have to work hard to achieve. Even it, it doesn't matter whether you're coming from a poor background or a rich background. Mm -hmm. But you know, the standards or the principles of life, they're just the same. Whether you're coming from a poor background or a rich background, mm -hmm. the morals remain the same. Mm -hmm. So you tell this girl, if you work hard, if you be patient, if you just talk to God, I believe as a believer in God and his promises, mm -hmm. Just be patient, talk to God, engage yourself in some activities that will not let you go astray. Yeah, and this one I think is just uh, standard principles across. Mm -hmm. The question yeah. that I keep asking yeah. when I talk to women who are trying to change lives of young girls out there, who is talking to the boys? Because I keep saying that it takes two yes. to tango. For a girl to get pregnant, a boy has to be involved. So are we, are we messing and thinking that we are well, correcting the situation? Mm -hmm. OK. But by the way, leaving the boy child outside the box, mm -hmm. it's also another mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's a girl child. They, well, most of the time, even in the since time immemorial mm -hmm. we've been taken as the vulnerable vulnerable group mm -hmm. or we've been seen as the weaker side mm -hmm. that's why you keep it strong to the girls but the boy child too mm -hmm. should not be left outside the box mm -hmm. so the, the the duty still remains with the mother talk with the boys mm -hmm. talk with the girls too as much as i talk to the girls mm -hmm. i also do to the boys mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't discriminate, but now I'm just specializing on gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the back of my of my mind, mm -hmm. I know the boy child should not be left. Exactly. Yeah, should not be left out. So in most cases, you'll find that uh, girls, the society, today's society, people are going for, people are, they want it so quick. 
young people want it so quick. They don't want to go through the process of hustling and just making ends meet through uh, a process. They see what people post on social media and they just want to be like them. So when you talk to these girls, what do you tell them? Mm, you know, the challenge has come with the digital, we say this era of digital thing. Mm -hmm. And now there's a lot of social media thing. And pressure. Pressure, mm -hmm. pressure through social media. What we see, what we see hits us so much rather than the practicals that we undergo. Mm -hmm. So I would advise them that don't live the social media life. Do a practical Because no one, no one posts her or his bad side. No, 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 no. Mm. Even me, before I come to the limelight, if you see my social status, you'll feel like everything is okay. It's not okay. Until you speak about Things it. are different from the gr on the ground. Mm -hmm. Things are different. So when you're talking to these girls, you mm -hmm. tell them, see, this is just a social media. Have you gone and have you met this friend? physically and naturally and known the process that it takes to reach there. Mm. It's a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a process. And even even myself, it's a process. I came from somewhere, let me say primary school, mm -hmm. worked hard to secondary school, and you still work hard to even the socialites, the celebs, they went through and most of them went through school. Mm -hmm. They actually went to school first, mm -hmm. is when now they now develop their talents. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell her that you look at this girl, for example, I, 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 I might pick on uh, Wau. I'll tell her, you look at Wau. She's not just doing the music. This lady had to struggle from primary school. She had to work on her books. She had to pass through secondary school mm -hmm. and through to the college. Mm -hmm. So now she's doing her thing. It didn't just come like, pop and you have it. Mm -hmm. You have to go a process, be patient, working hard, and then achieve achievement. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about the widows you talk to. Yeah, widows. Uh, we live in a society, today we, we've got HIV. Mm -hmm. And you find that uh, some societies are still retrogressive. They still hold on to the culture of wife inheritance. Mm -hmm. Now, you find in life there are s some women who will not see a problem being inherited, despite the fact they know so-and-so passed on because of HIV. HIV. They still feel like, okay, that is what this culture says. So I will have to be inherited just because she doesn't want to lose whatever wealth she amassed with the husband. So what do you tell such women? Do you enlighten them on that? Yeah, I talk to them mm -hmm. and I tell them that's not the way. And uh, fortunately, I'm enlightened. Mm -hmm. I know it's not a must and uh, you can do without that. Mm -hmm. You can take a different path, but it's just because of fear lack of believing in yourself mm -hmm. that's why these women struggle with this mm -hmm. and the culture that like i said the pattern just continues because they didn't know the the ones that they passed didn't know they passed it on and it's keep passing on but i tell them it is not the way to go mm -hmm. you only need to believe in yourself mm -hmm. uh, you have to start a new beginning mm -hmm which is a must mm -hmm. it's not the same the story will never be the same mm -hmm. and you just have to start a new beginning and uh, it's not necessary that you you must be inherited to start a new beginning mm -hmm. you can start it on a different path and oh. you make it okay yeah. so while at whatever you do what are some of the challenges that you have faced while trying to talk to these young girls and widows at large some of them do not get it. Mm -hmm. Actually, when the, I tell them my story, mm -hmm. they look at it as yours is fictions. Mm -hmm. It's not real. How? I've even been accused of you're not doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. You must be having somebody sponsoring you to do this. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that you can do it by yourself. 
Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what 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 do you intend to achieve uh in whatever you're doing? What you what is your mission? What is what is your push that at the end of the day this is what I want to have achieved come 2022, come 2023. This is what I want to see. Okay, I wish I had, uh, and I, uh, as per now, I don't have an office or an uh, organization that I work for spreading the gospel that you are strong enough to make it as a widow. You can stand by your own. Mm -hmm. You are strong enough as a girl child to just work the normal process and achieve it. Mm -hmm. But to that channel that I use through mm -hmm. my phone, whichever way that I might even meet you and start conversation, at the end of it all, mm -hmm. my goal is to just have that change the uh, generation mm -hmm. with a different perspective and view in life mm -hmm. not like our culture used to and this is the way we should mm -hmm. the, the, it's high time we have a different perspective on how we view life okay yes so it's been a good conversation and mm -hmm. we are almost coming to an end of our interview this morning but before we end the show i want you to look into that camera and just uh, encourage a widow out there and a young girl, tell them a word of advice. Yeah, I think my wrap up will be that you may never really have a choice to become the person you wanna be or you are today, but you have a choice to make the right decision. You might be pushed by circumstances people, situation, but you have the right, you have a choice to make the right decision. Okay, so it was nice having you and would wish to have you more here so that we can continue with such conversation. We thank you for coming and here at Y254, we celebrate you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, we've come to the end of our show this morning and uh, I would want to advise a yeah, young girl out there that as girls we are the future of tomorrow. And as I keep saying, uh, a family without uh, girls, it's like a river without a source. So let no one intimidate you, let no one put you down. Always have the spirit of moving on even when you fall. I've been your host, Faith Msoli. Kayesu is up next with Galstock. <laughs>